Hello, so the candidates tournament has started now. Uh, they played uh, six rounds and uh, I thought, um, well, let's, um, let's talk a bit about uh, what's happened there so far and I feel that it's uh, easier to do that in a video uh, than in a YouTube, no, I mean in a Twitter post or, or a Facebook um, post. Uh, and um, with me I have um, uh, Espen Ardisten, who is um, uh, who's my manager, of course, um, who does all the dirty work. And um, he, uh, he used to be a pretty good chess player uh, himself. Uh, he, he was at some point 2450. Um, now he claims to be 2400. He's not quite 2400. It's it's a bit same as in golf where he claims to be a handicap 10, but really he, he's not. Um, but um, what's your impression? Thank you for a very nice introduction. Yeah. Minus. So what's what's your thought on the candidates um, so far? I think far? there have been uh, uh, pretty fighting chess, some very exciting games. And uh, are you surprised by the way it has uh, gone so far? Uh, not, not particularly. I, I think um, also in the last candidates tournament there was um, there was a lot of fighting chess. Um, obviously, there there was the factor that I was playing, Aronian was mm -hmm. playing, and we we had a, a really good start, both of us. Uh, after six rounds, we both had plus three, and so the others kind of needed to to win a lot of games, and that automatically led to fighting chess and this time they're just going at it from from the start and that's uh, but even though it's just cool to see it's just two players on a plus score so far I guess and I'm a plus yeah player. now today things changed quite a bit um, I thought Swid Swidler has played pretty well so far um, he claimed that he was very lucky against Topalov well he didn't play the opening very well but I thought from there on uh, he played very energetically. Um, he did, of course, lose to to Aronian, but that can that can happen to everyone. But today his play was was not so great. But I'm 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 really impressed by by what Anand has done done so far. Um, uh, of course, his win against Aronian was very good. Um, very very good technique with. He um, won almost. Only by technique. Al al almost only by technique, which is really rare against uh, Aronian. And Aronian didn't. I mean, he didn't take it lightly in the sense that he just gave up in a bad position. He spent all his time trying desperately to find counter chances. But Anand had some very nice maneuvers, uh, maneuvering his bishop uh, from d d4 to d2 and his other bishop to f1, clearing space for the rook and so on. It was very very beautiful to watch uh, and also his game um, with uh, Mamed Yarov was very very impressive where he um, uh, where he, he just played very very powerfully after he equalized in the opening then just played very powerfully each move no waiting move each move ha had its point mm -hmm. and he just took over all the key squares very quickly I think all of Aronian's games have been really tough fights. Yeah, Aronian and also also Anand. You know, he, he, against Kramnik, he went for he went for one of the most complicated lines in the opening. Um, I don't know exactly how much he knew, but it's uh, it's uh, he has um, he has a good mind. The game the game against Anand. Uh, Kramnik and Anand. Yeah, Kramnik and Anand. But uh, and and also. I, I was even impressed with this game against Andrekin, where he uh, he just played very very good sound chess. From he, he got a normal, perhaps slightly worse position from the opening, and then he just uh, he just gradually outplayed Andrekin. He didn't get serious winning chances, but it was clear who was playing the better chess mm -hmm. um, in that. Do game. you think he should have played on in the final position? I mean, I don't really understand why you offered a draw mm -hmm. quite yet, but um, but there was there was nothing much much there. Um, if he if he hadn't taken on f three, 
Will he have had chances then? Um, I don't know. I think I thought the most likely scenario then would be that uh, the C and B pawns as well as the rooks would be exchanged, and then mm. and then you can sort of play for a while, put your bishop on d5, which controls the whole board, uh, and um, try and push on the king side. But it's very very far fetched, and it's it's honestly it's not very typical of a nun to look for those little no. little things. Mm. If if there's nothing su substantial there, he usually prefers a clearer route. Um, also, I I think Kramnik today. Yeah, he. Um, uh, obviously, that was a blow for him. Difficult uh, for him when he has such a good position yesterday against Aronian, and he he, he can convert and then losing. Yeah. Badly today. But it's um it's it's one of um, the things that you need to be good at in chess, and I think it's one of the things that I do very well. It's to you always need to adjust to the new circumstances. You cannot mm -hmm. let what happened earlier in the game or um, in the game before you cannot let it affect you to such uh, a degree. I think today uh, Kramnik's play was perhaps too too emotional, too, uh, and it, it was just. Um, he wasn't psychologically. So he was. He wasn't psychologically ready for this uh -huh. game. I uh -huh. thought, uh, to be honest, mm -hmm. Topalov played very well. I mean, Topalov. He's he's a very good player. He showed enterprising preparation today and also yesterday. And today he he followed it up by playing very well after that. So well. uh, it's four Russians in the tournament, but they need to. Uh, to play better now because not, none of them are on. Uh, yeah, none of them are on the plus score. So that's uh, special. Yeah, uh, Karyakin hasn't gotten it going. Uh, no, that, that's. Uh, so very. I mean, he he's very solid. Uh, Kramnik played a very very good game against him, um, and one and in the other games have been fairly normal draws. So. I don't. I don't think it's it's likely that he'll make a comeback. But what do you think? Uh, they have played uh, six rounds now, and uh, and it's such a long tournament. It's so tiring. It's fourteen rounds. You remember how tired you got yeah. last year? Do you think the tournament will be decided in the last rounds, or yeah, can I, very I, much I, change? I, I think so. Uh, I, I think I still think the only candidate for being a runaway winner is is Aronian. If he doesn't catch fire, I mean, if if he had won today against Andrekin, which I I think he it's should, close, yeah. I think he should at some point. I don't, I don't think his uh, technique was good enough today, uh, and I I think I don't have to explain that to him. I think he he feels that very much himself that he should have, um, how, how, try. Uh, he should have been able to create more today. If he had won today. He would have been a definite candidate for for running away with the tournament. Now, I don't think so. I think it's going to go down to to the wire, and it could well be be you know that plus three is enough to win, like it was last time. But the the one key lesson we learned last time is that anything can happen in in the last rounds when when people get tired. The, um, the usual rules, they don't okay. apply. So uh, it's a rest day tomorrow, and then, uh, then they're on again. So uh, we look forward to the rest. It's really exciting stuff going on there. Yeah, I'm, 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 again, I'm, I'm enjoying it both as a, as a chess fan and as a, as a, as a professional and, um, and the opponent of one of these guys in, in, <laughs> in, the, in, in the World Championship match. So uh, it, it's a great show and... Um, yeah, I think we need to grab some food now, some man miners, so maybe we should uh, think about uh, saving uh, the rest for another day. Yeah, I mean, I've said I've said everything that I need to say and more. So Thank goodbye you. and um, and uh, we'll we'll talk later.